September, we got in that Greyhound bus in front of Rockefeller Center where the Ebony Fashion Fair uh, offices were. All of us girls ready to go. 10 models, four wardrobe, music director, about 20 of us on that bus. Going from city to city, and uh, there were 90 cities, you know, so that was a city a day for three months. Sometimes we would go through places that were not welcoming. The Civil Rights Bill hadn't been passed yet. And that was actually the first time I had ever seen a sign for white ladies and colored women. You know, you weren't allowed to use the bathrooms because you were black or you couldn't go into certain diners. But other than that, the reward on the other side was well worth it because we met wonderful people. It was quite special. It was the cream of black society. We met with the best of the population of those cities, and these were black women. I will never forget this um, woman. She was a black woman, and I took her backstage. She said, everybody in the back is black. She said, and all the people work this black. And I said, yeah. And she said, oh my God, I've never seen this before. I also remember going to the Peabody Hotel. We were one of the first black groups to stay. And the housekeeper, she came in. It, it breaks my heart. <laughs> she was so proud. She was just so glad that finally there was a black group staying at this hotel. Every time the Ebony Fashion Fair came to town, everybody knew about it, whether you win or not. It was a major event. I just liked the idea of getting dressed up and going out with my mom. When I got there, that's all I remember was the show outside, the way people arrived and what they were wearing. People wore the absolute best clothing that they had, and some of the outfits were just totally over the top. They came there with the mindset to outdress the people they were going to see on stage. When you first see the audience and you're like, oh my god, the house is full, we better kill him, let's break a leg. Give your best show. You saw it in a magazine, but to see it on someone walking down the runway, it was wonderful. I wanted people to get butterflies in their stomach from, you know, experience the beauty of those designs. You know, you open it up and it's, ah! <gasps> <laughs> These girls are coming down the runway with an attitude like a Mack truck. So I designed for Fashion Fair for the Mack truck. I had this see-through outfit. When I came out, it was like, oh! Everybody was like, astonished, overwhelmed, because I, I looked nude. My favorite part of Ebony Fashion Fair is the commentator. Now I think of Audrey Smalls. She had a way of describing the clothes that was just unbelievable. Consider this, ladies. What to wear on Sunday when you don't get home till Monday. You wanted to hear what she was saying almost as much as you wanted to see the clothes. Hubert de Givenchy. Yves Saint Laurent, Bill, and they would say, blast the entire audience. There were oohs and ahs and, and actual responses. It's probably the difference between going to a concert at Madison Square Garden where you get to enjoy the music or going to the opera where you're not allowed to. <laughs> I was always drawn to those dresses or those gowns that kind of had movement to them. The evening gowns, just the, the look of how they were structured. Oh, you would always wait to see the bride come out in the amazing bridal gown. To see this in such an upscale, exciting manner was extraordinary. And the year they put that large size model in was the year they got it right. The audience screamed. You are now speaking to the choir. They were showing the crowd something that spoke to them directly. The women that attended the show would eventually come up to me and ask me, how do you think that Valentino gown would look on me? <laughs> that was a, the, the running question across the country. You know, everybody wanted to see themselves in the uh, haute couture. Fashion Fair and Mrs. Johnson, for me, as an early designer, was part of my validation. That's one of the changing moments of my fashion philosophy for my life, was to see that other black designers were doing tasteful clothes. 
It just opened the doors for me, the fashion fair. It gave me the experience I needed to have. It made me think totally in a bigger realm because I always looked at it was a stepping stone for the future. I started my own business in 1977. I said if John Johnson could have his own business, I wanted to have my own business. He was really my inspiration. And I can say all these years later, stop. it's one of the main highlights of my life. Ebony Fashion Fair brought fashion to the people in real life, in real places. It's exposing fashion right to the grassroots. We let people see that there's something more to life than struggling. There's glamour and there's beauty and you can have it too. Imagine yourself a model or, or see that beauty uh, and to know that it, it's possible. Our people can wear and look good in these gowns and maybe even wear them better than anybody else on the planet. And knowing that you were seeing something that was basically making history. Whether you want to say looks and, and beauty and fashion are superficial, but comfort in your own skin is important. It showed America and the world for that matter that African Americans are beautiful, that we could aspire to and acquire great things.